Hello guys and welcome to another episode. Actually I'm right in the middle of finishing another one of my scrapyard reparathon videos when something quite essential here in the shop broke that we have to take care of first as it seems. So here is my drill press that I use in almost every video and uh, well I didn't find this on the scrapyard today but uh, it basically used to be a piece of scrap when I first uh, Bought this in, I think, 2011. And um, for all of you who don't have a drill press, it's really one of the most um, handy tools to own. Unfortunately, as you can see here, it does have a problem. Uh, normally, this part here uh, holding the chuck would uh, always be um, pulled up by a spring that's inside here. And that spring broke, and I'll have to fix that. Just to show you how this works, uh, there is an asynchronous uh, motor here, a three-phase induction motor in the back. Uh, it was made by AEG, uh, which is the only nameplate that this entire thing has, so there is some possibility that this entire power drill was built by AEG, but I don't know that. I would guess that would have been at least in the 1950s, maybe earlier, because it has these uh, slit screws on here. And I don't know about the original paint of this drill press. Maybe it was painted green, maybe it was uh, painted gray as it is now, but this is not the original color. This is what I put on there back in 2011. Now uh, let's open this nut up here and take off this cover. This is made by cast aluminium. You can see that that is very thick, uh, so it's still very weighty. And here we have a bunch of pulleys that can be used to uh, switch between different rotational speeds of the actual spindle up here uh, from the smallest to the biggest diameter that would mean that we have uh, the biggest reduction so the slowest possible speed that this can run on. Um, the uh, rotating spindle goes from the pulley all the way down to the chuck and there is one one part in there one little peg uh, that broke off like three years ago, but that wasn't because of the machine, that was because I um, kind of abused it. And what I did is using one of these, um, yeah, well, pyramid-shaped drills here. And they are intended to, to drill through relatively thin sheets, but I used this to drill through like 10 millimeter thick steel. And as you can see, there are these steps in there. So it's kind of, uh, well, let's call it an unbalanced uh, load on the machine because it goes tuck 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 and maybe that was a little too much so the pack broke but I just uh, tick welded it back on there unfortunately I can't show it to you to you right now um, just one more thing about this this is not completely massive but it's very thick walled and so is everything in here this thing weighs around 100 kilograms for a relatively small uh, drill press and at least well, from my experience, this is much better than what you can buy, at least in, in home improvement stores these days, because everything here is much more massive and mu much more rugged than what I see when I am in the stores. Like, for example, uh, the teeth on here, much, much thicker, just a much better made uh, than what you usually get these days. So I can recommend getting an old drill press and uh, it'll, it'll make many many things much easier around the shop. This crank here, uh, <laughs> I, I forged this from a piece of steel also about 10 years ago. A very uh, rough work as you can see but it does work. The same is going on uh, with this um, little vise here. This is an Optimum brand vise. So this wouldn't be part of the original um, equipment of this drill press but I bought this from the same guy back then and this is also a great vice and this crank here was also missing so I forged that as well and uh, yeah I've been using that for almost 10 years now but uh, let's open this thing up take the spring out and see if we can repair it and you can see that there's um, a piece of gasket between uh, the lid and the body of the machine and that is uh, to hold the grease that is usually inside here. You can see some of the grease here. Now uh, this spring here is supposed to put uh, tension on this mechanism and this little hook here is supposed to be longer and 
it's uh, uh, supposed to hold on this pack here. So you would have to force this all the way around uh, with the hook wrapping around this little pack. But, but since the hook has broken off, it just won't hold anymore. So what I have to do is to take the entire thing out, remove the grease, and then let's see if we can just TIG weld a piece of steel on here very quickly without uh, damaging the spring, hopefully. So I'm outside now, and I will try to remove the grease. Uh, let me just pour some W40 onto that. And I've recently started to, to just buy the WD-40 in canisters instead of the small cans that you get at the home improvement store. And the idea here really is just that uh, I need so much of it that the, the little cans are just not economical for me anymore. And well, I think that a lot of people have asked me before or wondered, I do not have any particular brand that I use. Uh, I've used all kinds of no-name products, but this time again, I ended up with, with WD-40 just because uh, I could buy, <laughs> buy it in a five liter canister. And I was frankly just too lazy to look for something else. And there are some, also some German products, uh, but I think they're typically a little more expensive. And I frankly just don't see uh, such a huge difference in them. I think a lot of uh, a lot of guys uh, like one or the other brand just because of the smell of the perfume that they apparently put into these things. Um, whether we talk about WD-40 or or Bellistol or Brunox or what el else they got out there. Um, I also sometimes in my videos used to do this with uh, with gasoline. Um, I'm trying not to do that anymore because of the fumes and the fire hazard apparently. We don't have to remove all the grease here. I just don't want this uh, to burn and stink uh, right in my face when I weld it. This should be good enough though. Now inside one of the garden sheds and this is actually where I store my stock. And um, most of the stock here or Let's say almost all of it is from different scrap yards. These um, tubes and flat bars and so on, they usually come in six meter length here in Germany. But the best you usually get at a scrap yard is around 1.5 meters. But that's good enough for most of what I do. And I'd say that uh, even though I don't have them in the full length, uh, a lot of this here is still valuable. I think a couple of hundred uh, bucks at least. And up here I keep steel that is too short uh, for anything particular and I think I'll just uh, saw off a little bit of this tube here and bend this around and, and weld that to the spring. Now is the spring steel? No, of course not, but well, the forces on that spring are not that big so maybe I can just use this ordinary construction steel for that. That's the part I just made. You see that little hook right there? And I'm now trying to tick weld that onto there and let's hope it just works and fits inside. So you can see this rotating shaft here in the middle and there's a hole drilled through that and we have to um, put this little pack here which is actually a screw that's not the original part but acts just like a little pack uh, we have to push that through that hole and that, that is what is attached to the actual uh, spindle mechanism here and once I have done that I will have to wrap the spring around until it's under tension again this is uh, quite fiddly Let's try. Oh, 
Looking pretty good. Need some new grease. So I'm now testing the machine, drilling some holes, and the mechanism seems to work just fine again. Now I know this wasn't the most extreme, longest, biggest, whatever episode I ever made, but if I upload something like this now and again, you get the chance to see way more of my work. So if you like that, then please give this video a like, and the next Reparathon will then follow in just a few days. In the meantime, maybe check out my Patreon and support this channel under patreon.com slash tpai. See you soon, guys.